Hello guys and welcome to the first part of a four part series in the nitro engine tuning. Now this is probably one of the most, if not the most, asked question on the channel and that is I've got a nitro car but it's cutting out, it's, I'm struggling to tune it, it's doing this and it's not doing that. So in this tutorial, this updated tutorial, because of course I have done hundreds over the years but not any for quite a while. So in this tutorial I'm going to be using the Hyper 7. Now, let me just stress, if you have a different vehicle or a different, different engine, the process of nitro engine tuning is exactly the same. They both have the same parts, they both have the same needles, and they both have uh, require the same attention and the same settings to run properly. So in this video, part one, we're just going to be taking a look at the carburetor. We're not going to be making any adjustments, and we're not going to be starting the engine. We're just simply going to be having a look at the carb and showing you guys what each part does. So let me just show you the area on your nitro engine where the carburetor is. So the engine carburetor can easily be located because it has the air filter coming out of it in the center. Some RC cars will have a large air filter, such as this one. Other ones will have a smaller air filter, a circular or maybe a square one that sits on top of the carburetor. Now, if you carefully remove the air filter, Okay, so taking a look at the engine carburetor, what I've done is I've just removed the air filter for easiness. The carb has three main needles that you need to be looking at, okay? It has the high speed needle, the low speed needle, and the idle speed screw. Let me just stress, the low speed needle, don't touch it unless you need to. Try all other options first and then adjust your low speed needle. The low speed needle can be difficult to diagnose whether it's rich or lean and it's always a lot easier if you just leave it at the factory default settings. Now just a note on factory default settings, if you have messed it up, please take a look in your instruction booklet because 9 times out of 10 you will always find the default carburetor settings in your RC car instruction booklet or if it's an aftermarket engine then you will find it in the instruction booklet that came with the engine. Failing that, then if you go to Google and simply just search, uh, put in your engine, put in default carb settings, and they chances are they will come up. So let's first take a look at the first uh, needle I mentioned, the high speed needle. Now the high speed needle usually is in this brass colored tube. It's got the screw inside, it's usually a flat end screw, and it's just inside this brass colored tube, okay? In the middle here, this is your air intake. This has no impact on the tuning. There's no screw here, there's no adjustment here. So, and then on this side, you can see, this little one here is your idle speed screw. This controls the speed at which your engine runs at when you're not applying any throttle. So basically, if we um, apply this to a real car, for example, when you start the engine, it's the speed at which the engine will run at before you put your foot on the accelerator. That's basically what this screw does. It just uh, controls at what speed the engine runs whilst you're not applying any throttle. The high speed needle that we just mentioned adjusts the fuel and air mixture from partial throttle to a full throttle. So basically that is adjusting the amount of fuel that is being allowed going into your carburetor from partial to full throttle. So if you take a look at the radio, the high speed needle controls the fuel and air mixture. Basically that's controlling how much fuel is being allowed to go into your carburetor, therefore your engine, from partial to full throttle. That's what the high speed needle does. Up until partial throttle, the low speed needle controls the mix. And that's, what, that's the one we're going to be taking a look at now. Now if we flick the buggy over the other side, the low speed needle is located on this side, usually on the end of the carburetor barrel, just where the throttle linkage connects to your carburetor. This here is your low speed needle. As I say, this one controls the fuel and air mixture from idle speed up to partial throttle. So let's say a quarter throttle. Now you may be thinking, okay, so there's the three screws there, but what do they, how do you adjust them all? How do I make my engine rich and lean? So let's start by saying, what does rich and lean mean? So Lean basically means, if you hear the term, my engine's running lean, that would mean that it's running with more air and less fuel. Rich means that it's running with more fuel and less air. Out of the two, it's better to run with more fuel, for obvious reasons. These engines, they don't have a sump. 
these guys rely on the fuel that goes in to lubricate them. So having fuel, an adequate fuel, is absolutely vital for engine temperature and engine wear and engine life. If you run an engine lean, it's going to blow up no time at all. It's essential that you have these guys running rich enough that there's enough fuel going in to lubricate them adequately so that therefore uh, the engine has got sufficient lubrication. So let's talk about now how do we adjust the carburetor. So looking at just for example the high speed needle, however this does apply to the low speed needle too, turning this brass needle clockwise if you think of it, you're turning it clockwise, so therefore you're turning off the tap. This is leaning the engine. Let me just show you that. So this would be leaning the engine out, turning it clockwise. You're closing off the tap. You're closing off the tap of fuel. Therefore, there's going to be less fuel going in. Um, exactly the same with the low speed needle but like I said earlier don't touch it unless you need to if you turn it clockwise that's going to decrease the amount of fuel going in turn it counterclockwise that's going to allow more fuel going in just apply it to the tap scenario that I just told you about turning off the tap you turn it clockwise you shut off the water turning these needles clockwise you're uh, shutting off the fuel supply or decreasing the fuel supply with the idle speed screw when you turn that one clockwise this tightens up and therefore that will make your carburetor gap larger so therefore the engine rpm will run higher at the idle speed decreasing it counterclockwise that will decrease the idle speed therefore it will run at a lower rpm it's as simple as that there's only three things you need to worry about and just one last tip before we move on to the next video which you'll see a link to in the end of this video is when adjusting it's essential that you only do very small turns at a time just one eighth of a turn clockwise let me just show you what one eighth of a turn looks like so it's on this setting here and then when you just zoom in you can see one eighth of a turn would be just that much so we went from there to there and that's all I would do at a time if you go making very large adjustments because you're getting impatient with it, which in some circumstances is understandable, it can be frustrating, but if you make really, really large adjustments, you're going to miss that optimum setting and you're going to go from it being too rich to too lean or vice versa. So it's essential that you're going to be making small adjustments at a time. <coughs> okay, so in, this, in the next video, we're going to be looking at tuning the idle speed screw or adjusting the idle speed screw and the effect that that has on the engine when you turn it clockwise and counterclockwise and in the one after that we're going to be having a look at the high speed needle followed by the low speed needle and how to tune the low speed needle if you need to thanks so much for watching hope this has been helpful to you stay tuned for the next three parts of this uh, tuning se uh, series and we'll see you in the next one